It's Friday. We're getting PFF'd up with Sam Munson of PFF. That'll be very exciting. Brandon Marshall kicks off the show. We're going to talk a little Chicago Bears, a little Thursday Night Football recap, and get you set for everything going on on Sunday in Week 10. Welcome to Evan Adams, and happy Friday. Let's drink. Welcome to Up and Adams at Up and Adams Show on Twitter. Let's talk a little Thursday night football. Not the most exciting game. Panthers got a win, though, 25-15 over the Falcons. Uh, and I loved seeing the black helmets almost as much as I loved seeing another big night out of Donta Foreman, who had 130 yards and a score. Uh, and you know, fantasy-wise, daily fantasy-wise, whatever, he has hit the century mark three times in the last four games. So to me, this is a reminder of what this Panthers team can be capable of as they build towards next season. So that's about as good as I can do as far as takeaways from this game. The bigger picture here, of course, is the Buccaneers who play in Munich this weekend against the Red Hot Seahawks. Uh, and the Bucks just got a gift, even more, even more time, even more leeway in the NFC South as they try to get things figured out. And they might have, as we learned from future Hall of Famer Levante David just yesterday. So Atlanta falls to four and six, right? So that means the Bucks stay in first place this week, even with a loss to Seattle in Germany, they stay at the top. Can they turn it around? I know one person who believes in Tom Brady uh, and one person who also believes in Aaron Rodgers, as I saw him on, on the Inside the NFL, riling up his co-host, and we bring him in now. So let's bring in our good friend, all-pro wide receiver, and I am athlete media mogul. You love Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> well, I don't want to say I love Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> but we got to be real, right? It's easy for us to throw away, what, the last 15, 16 years the two, the four-time MVP uh, trophies that he has and, and, and talk about, oh, he's terrible this year. Come on, man. If the game is on the line, if your life is on the line and you had to pick one quarterback in that division, who would you pick? I had to put them boys on the spot. It was and great. every single one of them, Ray Lewis, Julian Edelman, <laughs> Phil Sims, everyone had to say Aaron Rodgers. So stop this nonsense. Yeah, Julian was like, yeah, yeah, Aaron Rodgers at the end. It was great. I loved it. And I love that Sims is like, I'm hosting this. I always do that. I'm hosting. Right. Don't ask me a question. Right. That's what my job is. Uh, Brandon, I want to talk to you. The, uh, the last night, just this thing happened. P.J. Walker is leading the Panthers to a win, of course. But it's Baker Mayfield. I don't know if you saw this. We'll show you. At the end of the game, this had everybody talking. No. No helmet, headbutting. What did, what did Al Michaels said? He's trying to maybe get into concussion protocol. Certainly trying to avoid it. Though, what what is he doing? Well, um, he he's showing that he's not a quarterback. Uh, he, he's not uh, he's not very smart, right? Like when you're a quarterback, oh, you have boy. to be cerebral. You know, you have to be able to process. You have to be able to see the big picture. And right now, he's clearly uh, showing us that he doesn't see the big picture. How do you do that? Like, come on, man. Like, you think this is cool? Like, Baker Mayfield, wake up. But, again, Baker Mayfield has uh, had some questionable decisions yeah. over the last couple of years on the field. Um, and this may be the reason why. Yeah, you don't see Aaron Rodgers out there doing that, that's for sure. He's you not, can't do that. Yeah, come on, protect he, your head. He's too busy throwing three interceptions to the, the Lions' pitiful defense. Oh, oh, hold on. Before we get into the show... You like, listen, before we get into Aaron Rodgers and all this other Baker Mayfield stuff. There's so much to talk stuff, about. Oh, my goodness. I went to this little cute little restaurant, okay, in Weston, Florida. Okay. And I pulled out the old paper, the New York Times. <laughs> I hate you. And I go to the crossword <laughs> Did you? word puzzle, and it was line 57, and there you were, Kay Adams in the New York Times. Which, wow, you really, you? you really take those producer cues well. Richard Isakow back there, to your, your best what? friend telling you what to say. Yeah, I will say, uh, you're, you're a good friend. Uh, I, w I made the crossword. Listen, I will tell you this. I, I'm not like a, as much of a Jeopardy person. or a, uh, So if I wasn't a clue in Jeopardy, it wouldn't be as cool. But I do the crossword puzzle religiously every day. So for, my little, for me to be a clue, and it says, I don't even know what it says. Oh, um, sports, Line 57. Yeah, sportscaster Adams, who hosted Good Morning Football. I was like, wait, what? 
What? They could have picked. They could have picked like a K jeweler thing. They could have picked K Adams from The Godfather. They picked me, V Marsh. They picked you. Look at this. <laughs> this is amazing. How does it feel? Like, I, be I, honest. How does it feel? Do you feel like you finally arrived? I fi I finally made it. I really. That's. It's all I've ever wanted. I don't need money or happiness or Super Bowl rings. I just needed to be in the New York Times New Friday crossword. Uh, that's a big deal. Yeah. I, maybe I would have made it if I was chosen to be the Colts head or uh, interim coach for the rest of the season because that was the big news this week. Frank Reich out. They replace him with former center turn ESPN analyst Jeff Saturday. No previous coaching experience, as you know. You are a vet in that locker room. You are a Stephon Gilmore, a DeForest Buckner, uh, and you went to this team expecting to contend. How are you feeling about the move? Uh, well, you're, you're, you're dealing with reality right now. So you're looking at this situation, you're looking at your record, and you're saying – we're not going to contend, right? And and changing the NFL is inevitable, right? So these guys are prepared for that. They know that. Now, when you make a move like that, you may have a, a couple guys in the locker room scratching their head. But the reality is this is not a good football team. You, know, you can look at the quarterback position. You can look at the offensive line. You're looking at some of the injuries. Uh, there's so many people um, that that's contribute to where they're sitting right now, three, five, mm -hmm. and one. Um, but Jeff Saturday in this position – Kate, have you heard all of the chatter and all the noise? It seems like everybody's against Jeff. Not me. Not me. I mm -hmm. love Jeff. Jeff has all the experience in the world to get it done. Jeff is one of the greatest centers to ever play the game. If you play center, okay, that means you know front seven. Okay. That means you know what the quarterback's doing. That means you have to understand defense. You know why you have to understand defense at the center position? Because you got to protect the quarterback. You got to be able to sit there and say, that nickel's coming, so let's slide, protect, let's go scat protection right here. I need my running back there. A lot of times these, these centers are, are, are more savvier and, and they have higher football IQ than quarterbacks. Why is it that the quarterbacks always get the, the offensive coordinator jobs or the head coaching jobs? Oh, yeah, Brandon, well, he the last time he coached, he was in high school and he went 3-8-1. I don't care. That doesn't matter. Jeff Saturday is more than ready. When you coach men, okay, in the National mm -hmm. Football League, the number one attribute you have to have is leadership. Right. You could, The alternative is who, okay? It's Josh McDaniels. It's Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels have all the experience in the world, and he's sitting on a 13 and 100 record as a head yeah. coach, whatever it is. He's not good at all. Why? Because he can't lead men. People don't want to play for him. He got, hell, he got people retiring midseason. Right? Josh right. McDaniels, he can't figure out a way to hold a lead. So I would rather go with a guy like Jeff Saturday, who can probably lead men well, you're saying and probably build teams lead around men. him. He can pro you don't know that he can lead men. Why, he has experience on the team. But I think that there's a lot of criticisms about this. One, including maybe, though we don't, I don't know this for sure, that they didn't check with some of the guys in the locker room that have been there with the team, like a Reggie Wayne, or guys who might have been able to take over uh, in an interim fashion and lead the team successfully because they've been there game in, game out. And then there's, of course, just the fact that it takes a lot of yourself to be a head coach, to try to be any coach, any defensive coordinator. You give a lot. You train your whole life for it, kind of, like you're in it. And so there's being a leader of men, but, like, for somebody to skip the line in that fashion is a bit of a slap in the face to all those guys, no? Skip the line? I, I disagree, right? To, to the problem is, in sports, um, we're, we, we usually lean on the side of tradition, mm -hmm. right? Yes. In every other industry, we celebrate uh, the disruptors, right? And some of the most successful people in the, in this world, you know, that's done amazing things in different spaces, whether it's film, whether it's uh, in, in, in banking or whatever else, they're disruptors. They thought a little differently. Okay, so yes, is it disruptive 100%? Is yeah. it uncomfortable for a lot of people? 100%. But please don't tell me a guy like Jeff Saturday, who's been in a locker room, in the trenches with some of the greatest some of the greatest football players to ever live and also head coaches to ever do it that he's not equipped to come in and build a team around himself when i say team i'm not talking about players i'm right. talking about who's going to call the plays on offense who's going to call the plays on defense someone who can sit in the booth just the same way that bill belichick has someone to sit in the booth to help with game day management like he can he do that if he does that and that handles the X's and O's, which he can definitely contribute to the X's and O's. And mm -hmm. he focused on leading the team.
he can definitely be successful. What, what does that I, mean? I think, I think, I think, I think if these next eight games go okay, and he uh, is the head coach moving forward, they go to my digital board that we <laughs> talked about. And, and and if he is the head coach next year, we could be head coach. telling one of the greatest, one of the greatest success stories ever. This guy was on ESPN. He has no experience. The world said he has no experience. And now look at now look at the Colts and look what they've done. Yeah. Jim Irsay. Wow, he was disruptive. Are they Maybe trying more for coaches, more hear, owners okay, should do this. On. I'm a little sad. We keep hearing about how competitive they want to be. And Jeff Saturday seeing it as an audition for next year. No part of you thinks that they don't want to be competitive potentially to improve their draft stock is this is there no thought in your head that this team is tanking oh 100 percent. i don't think it's tanking i think they're looking at what's what's next right that's why they made the move they did at the head coaching position that's why they made the move uh at the quarterback position that you'll see more moves like this mm -hmm. this isn't just the colts this is on in any losing organization on any losing team right we're talking about that with aaron Rodgers. remember that was a talk last week should they go to love right like should we bench Aaron Rodgers yeah. and see what we have here? We owe that to the they owe that to the organization as far as the coaches. So this is a part of uh, being a professional athlete, being a part part of this whole world is when your team sucks, which they do. They're not really good. They don't have a chance. You start looking at the future. You need to start playing some of these younger guys and seeing what you have. But you think that Jeff Saturday will be successful despite all of these things and somehow potentially like, like this team was going to be competitive. No, I wouldn't say, I'm not saying okay. that. You know, my biggest thing is, and I push back on a lot of people that saying that uh, he doesn't have the experience. Yes. Well, what, what, what do you mean, experience, right? Like we're talking about one of the greatest uh, centers to ever play. We're talking about his, his football IQ is through the roof. He's one, he's beloved in a lot of locker rooms. There's no one that can speak bad about Jeff Saturday, even the guys that he pancaked Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Everybody loves Jeff Saturday. OK, so I'm not saying that, you know, uh, he's going to go out there and crush it. What yeah. I'm saying is he's more than capable of getting the job done. Even on the show that you talked about earlier, I'm talking to Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis pushed back a little bit. And I asked Ray Lewis, I said, let's look at some of the worst teams and, and defenses out there right now. OK, let's look at uh, the Carolina Panthers. Let's look at the Atlanta Falcons. If you took over that team, would you make them better or worse? And he said, I'll make them better. Yeah. Right. And I asked Julian Elliman the same way, the same question. I asked other athletes the same thing. Jay Doosable last night on I Am Athlete Tonight. And he said the same thing. Now, not all athletes or players can go out there and do a phenomenal job coaching or managing. We've seen that in the past before with Michael Jordan. Great player, but right. potentially not a great general manager, not a great coach. And we've seen that. But there are some guys that can break through, absolutely. Is there a guy you played with? who you think could step in, and I'm going to take Fitzpatrick off the board, that you could step, <laughs> think could step in. Why? Why? Because I, I, I know you too well. Uh, who <laughs> could step in that you played with that would be a successful head coach right now without any coaching experience? Well, another one, right? Like, I'll start at the – this is easy. I'm going to start with the quarterback position. That's always the easy one. Um, I'll go with – uh, Josh McCown. Josh McCown will be a head coach in the National Football League. Josh McCown was supposed to get the Texans job uh, two years ago, but the backlash was so crazy mm -hmm. that they said we can't do that, right? But Josh McCown is a guy. Um, also, I will have to lean on a guy like, um, you know, let's see, uh, great leadership skills. I'm going to take the X's and O's out of it. Matt Forte. Yeah. People love following Matt Forte. I'll throw him out there. So those are two guys that I'll throw out there. But you know the number one guy you took away from me, and that's Ryan Fitzpatrick. <laughs> do you think he wants to do it? I could see Fitzy wanting to do it. Mm, no. No, Fitz, no. Fitz, Fitz, Fitz wouldn't want to do that. everything from you. All right, we, we no. talked about Aaron Rodgers to start. Before we hit the break, I want to make it, get this in here. Uh, he's very publicly putting accountability on his teammates, saying that they should think about benching guys who aren't performing. And then he has this performance himself against the Lions. And his message was that he's thrown so many touchdowns in this league, he doesn't give a bleep what any of the experts on TV have to say. How are you feeling if you're one of his teammates right now? Um, I'm listening to him. 
Um, because I'm 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 a, I'm a Google his name Aaron Rodgers mm-hmm. stats all time statistics, and you're going to see that he's won the MVP four times. He's uh, won the Super Bowl once. You okay? Um, you know he is probably the best thrower of the football that the National Football League has ever seen. Um, he's next level. Okay. So, yes, I am listening to him. And that's the problem in the NFL and some of our professional sports Mm -hmm. leagues. Now you have these younger guys coming in, not understanding, you know, deference, not understanding alignment. Right. So Aaron Rodgers, is he a great leader? I would say no. Is he a good leader? I would probably say no. But is he that guy at quarterback? Absolutely. So when it comes down to production, you can never question Aaron Rodgers' production. He has a game like this once every three years. Yeah. You know, okay, you know, I played against him in Chicago. This is the worst right? game I've ever seen out of him. This was the worst? I, I can't think of a worse game against a, an, a, against a, a not scary opponent that quarterbacks and offenses have been lighting up all year. I can't think of a worse right. performance from him. I think this was his worst. Okay. But what does that mean, though? Okay, so it's just... That he's going to whoop up is. on the Cowboys like he always does in Week 10. He, <laughs> al- he always has success. I mean, this weekend, he's had a lot of success against Dallas, and I think there is a chance to get it turned out, turned around to pull out. I don't blame Aaron. I blame um, I no, more no the blame on the front office. How can you not we support forward. him? Yeah, go ahead. We got to take a break. No, there's, n- there's no chance. You just said, I think there's a chance for them to get back on track. There's no, no chance. No, 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 no. Stop, Kay. What, what are we doing here? You were just in the New York Times, and you were talking about the Packers have a chance to beat Times. the Cowboys. Like, what are we doing here? Because You'll never he, make the New York Times again. Aren't with there this. some teams, wasn't there a team that you just got, like, you just got them no matter what? You weren't feeling 100%. You didn't, your quarterback, but, like, you just, you roasted that team over and over again. I'm sure you had that. That's that's Aaron with the, Aaron has a lot. Of, doesn't he have great games against the Cowboys? Am I crazy? Next up for you is the, the, the Sun Sentinel. The Miami Sun Sentinel. Wow, You'll man. never be in the times man. again. Oh, the Sun Sentinel. Your boy Omar came from the Sun Sentinel at I Am Athlete. You just threw some major shade of your boy Omar. All right, we're going to take a break here. Brandon's going to be with us. Uh, and we're going to talk a little uh, DeAndre and Kyler. I don't know if you heard the sound to this. It was on Hard Knocks. I heard it. But uh, I know, Brandon, you've got an opinion on D-Hop being back and Kyler Murray. It's all next. A huge game for the Buffalo Bills this week. McDermott's ruled Poyer and Rousseau out. Yikes. And, of course, we're taking it one day at a time with Josh Allen and that ulnar collateral ligament thing going on. I'm wishing him all the best, of course, as we keep hanging out with our all-pro receiver, the genius behind the I Am Athlete podcast. Brandon Marshall is here, and I want to look at some of the mm. other big matchups around the league this weekend with you, and we do start in Buffalo. And it's amazing. Got the Vikings. What a roll. They're 7-1. and one. You know them in and out. You were Chicago for so long. They're taking on the Bills, who are 6-2. and two. Obviously, we have an elbow situation. Allen hasn't practiced yet this week. Are you worried? How worried are you on a scale of 1 to 10 if you're a Bills fan right now? Yeah, I mean, you definitely, you're definitely worried because this is the year that you think that you can make it to the Super Bowl. You can get past KC. Um, you also got to think about Baltimore. I think Baltimore uh, is going to be the team the second half of the year. But you're worried, right? But you don't panic because you have Case, right? Case is one of those guys that can come in, Mm. he can hold things down, he can stabilize things until your guy gets back. But, I mean, it's hard to replace, uh, and uh, damn near impossible to replace a Josh Allen. So, um, you you, you definitely, you know, you're you're concerned, you're worried, but you don't panic. And Rousseau and Poyer being out, that's no good. Kirk Kirk Cousins is, like, on one right now, and he's got plenty of options to throw to. You mentioned Case Keenum. Do we have this footage of Case Keenum? Listen, Case, Case is uh, doing a pretty good Josh Allen impression. <laughs> Talk to me about these spin moves. <laughs> See, that's the coolest thing, right? When you have a guy come out here like this <laughs> and, and and he acts like this, it settles everyone down. Because I, I said don't you don't panic, but when your quarterback, your star player goes down, for about 10 minutes, everyone in the organization is like, what do we do, what do we do? And then you have a guy like this or a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick or a guy like Josh McCown that comes in, he tells a joke, he tells everybody it's going to be okay. And guess what? Everyone believes them, right? So, yes, Case is out there trying to be Josh. 
uh, we don't need you to be Josh. We just need you to be the case that was actually Lee in a way when you were in Minnesota. Yes, when he, I mean, remember those years? He took them so far, Case Keenum did, and I'm always rooting for him, uh, and we want to see those Bills fans succeed. All right, let's talk Colts Raiders. You mentioned Josh McDaniels. So I want to get into it with you. It's not a huge matchup on paper. There is interesting stuff going on, and it's a bit puzzling because we talked about the Colts side of things, but McDaniels is your former head coach. The Raiders, they're at 2-6, and six, and it's almost inexplicable because they have yeah. so much talent. And there's a lot of rumblings, especially over the past week, that McDaniels is not suited to be a head coach. Is that fair? Wow, he's not? Why isn't he? Look at all his experience. Look how many Super Bowls he won as an offensive coordinator. Being in New England, okay, having Tom Brady, helping Tom Brady out. Then getting a job in, in Denver in 2010 and losing. And sometimes, right, the second time around, you're better when you go through what you went through the first time, right? So he has all the experience in the world, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Maybe, just maybe, Kay, they should have went and got Jeff Saturday. But now he's gone. Oh boy. Now he's gone. He's not coming back. Josh McDaniels is definitely not suited to be a head coach. Absolutely not Why? because of what I talked about when we were talking about Jeff Saturday. Because he doesn't know how to lead people. You can have all the X's and O's in the world, Kay. But when you go into a losing locker room, the first thing you have to do is be able to get to the, to the players' mind and their hearts. And he's not capable of doing that. He's not capable of doing that with his players. He's not capable of doing that with his coaches. And when things hit the fan, it gets worse with guys like that. You have guys retiring mid-season. Think about that. Mm -hmm. That's horrible leadership. You want guys to rally around. You want guys to say, this is his first year back. I'm playing for him and his wife and his kids. Right. They're doing the opposite. They're saying, I'm shutting it down. Right? Okay. You got guys. So, oh, sorry. No, I want you to finish. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 because I'm glad you cut me off because, you know, I was going to rant for the next 10 minutes. I think, go. I, but I want to know the most important qualities in a head coach according to all pro Brandon Marshall, I'd like to know the top three in order. Leadership? Okay, let me slow down. Yep, and let me take a deep breath using my skills, okay, because I'm hot right now. Y'all talking about Jeff Saturday, y'all talking about Josh McCown, I mean, Josh McDaniels. Let me calm down and answer your question. Number one is leadership. And that doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be a head coach uh, for the Las Vegas Raiders, or you could be running ESPN Network or FanDuel Network. It doesn't matter if you can't lead people. You don't. You, you'll never. You'll never be successful. Okay. So that's number one. No matter what industry you're in. Okay. Yeah. Number two, you have to have. Uh, uh, you have to understand offense and defense and special teams. So the X's and O's is, is, is definitely important. What type of brand of football do you want to, 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 to present? Okay, so X's and O's is critical. And then the third is management. You got to understand how the game works. So you talk clock management, game day management. I would say those three things. But the most important one is leadership. And, and that's number two and number three aren't even close. Okay, so I know I've heard you, you have a lot, of, when I start thinking about this, and the best coach, the greatest coach currently, even, even though, you know, and his team is turning it around, they're still alive in the AFCs, you have a lot of reverence for Belichick. And Belichick, mm -hmm. of course, you know, uh, what is his approach? Does he get, did, when a player goes there, like you hear like what players say about him, and especially in 2022, you get in there, does he get in the heads and hearts of players? And why does the approach work well with Bill and none of his assistants? because he's successful. That's the problem. Don't come to the Denver Broncos in 2010 mm. telling us that our offense stinks and we're sorry when we're the number two offense that year and we were the number one offense. Look, Jay Cutler never recovered from that, right? <laughs> like, I'm glad I recovered from that. Like, it's traumatic. We had him cursing out coaches. We had people, the bus was scheduled to leave at 12 o'clock and we're, the, all the players, support staff, everybody's on the bus. And then you have you have Josh McDaniels in his office coming down at 1245. You have guys making 10, 15 million dollars a year sitting on a bus waiting for a head coach. When the when when the standard is at 12 o'clock, the bus leave and no matter who it is, you're left. Find your way there and you're going to be fine. Right. So the problem with some of these coaches that come from you know, a successful head coach or successful organization, they come in trying to be the other guy without having the success. That's yeah. a huge problem. And also you got to be yourself. Bill Belichick, that's only, 
Only Bill Belichick can be Bill Belichick. There's other ways to win the National Football League. Pete Carroll's Pete Carroll. Yeah, and he's okay? working. Sean Payton is Sean Payton. Just find who you are and make that work. I agree with that. And I, the more you and I talk, and I love talking to you because it makes me think of things a different way, and that's why I ask for those qualities. The more I talk to you, the more it's less of a list, like a linear. This is the most important. This It's literally a balance of the three. And if you have... Any any one of those three things in a good, healthy portion, you'll likely to have success in the NFL because you can have all the X's and O's. Which, of course, you can't say that Josh McDaniels isn't a, a you know a great uh, a mind, football mind, a savant or whatever. Like we've seen that play out. I mean, you might disagree with that, but he doesn't have the leadership quality. So it's almost a, a balance of all three. And the next team I want to talk about. No, he's a genius. Yeah, he's a genius. For he's sure. a football genius. So the, that so then you look at a team. I look at a team like Arizona. And I see a coach who I think players like. I mean, I know that they're, they're screaming and scuffling, but that's like, well, a player's coach. We're going to give you phone breaks. I'm going to get into your head. I'm going to be there. That's Cliff Kingsbury. And then you have mm-hmm. all the talent in the world on the field. And again, it's not working. So something there is missing. And before we even talk about the coach, because the coach is like the thing people don't like to talk about there, but it's a thing. But they, they got the Rams this week. Both of these teams um, have their season sort of hanging in the balance. So let's talk about Arizona because hard knocks this week. I don't know if you saw it. It was really revealing. We saw and we got to hear DeAndre Hopkins and Kyler Murray. And we saw this on the broadcast, but then we got, of course, what happened. And this was a stalled drive. It happened right after. And D-Hop asks Kyler on hard knocks, he says, what are you looking at? He said he was wide open and that he's trying to win. And Kyler told him to calm down that he'll get him the ball, but only targeted him then, of course, twice uh, over the final three quarters of this game uh, uh, against the Seahawks. So what is your takeaway? What did you make of this? First off, Richard and team, keep this video rolling, please. Okay. Kay, is this not the best uh, wide receiver group with the best hair? Look at D-Hop's hair. <laughs> look at Robbie Anderson right there. And then look at Hollywood Robbie. Brown, who's not even playing. Look at his hair. This is unbelievable. So I wanted to, I wanted to highlight that first. Um, here's a situation. We're talking about coaches. We're talking about yes. quarterbacks. Bill Belichick, Tom Brady had an amazing relationship um, or working relationship, mm-hmm. I would say, because they had things going on, but they kept it in-house and they always found a way to keep the culture and the production right where it needed to be, right, for 19 years. All right, Sean Payton, Drew Brees, okay? They're so – Russell Wilson – and, and Pete Carroll for 10 years. They had a phenomenal relationship. The problem is there seems to be a disconnect between Cliff and Kyler, all right? Because when you have a talented team like this, you have a talented quarterback like that, right? There's some type of power struggle happening right now because this team shouldn't be this bad. When there's a disconnect at the top, it's a trickle down effect to the locker room and to the support staff and the men and women that's doing that's helping in administration and management and other areas. So that's what you're seeing is a toxic situation starting to spill over to the game day and to the playing field. D Hop is frustrated. He just got back, right? Yeah. You got Kyler, he's frustrated. But the problem isn't right there. The problem is at the top. I don't know what's going on in that organization, but this might be a massive blow up here in the next couple Agreed. of weeks or by the end of this year. How do you fix it? You blow it up. <laughs> you're always one. You blow it up, you say, give me the damn ball. And, Listen, and and, I, and I'm not a fan of that, right? Like, I've been in a, a couple of blow-up situations. Yeah. And a lot of owners, a lot of, play, a lot of uh, you know, manage, ma- managers, general managers are quick to blow it up, right? A lot of times we don't sit down and try to conversate and try to figure out how do we get aligned and on the same page. But this is too far gone, yeah. right? You know, Kyler, I don't know if it's Kyler uh, maybe need a new situation or if it's Cliff. But the general mo- general manager and the owner has to make a decision who do they want to invest in. And, and they have to blow it up, right? They have to. Brandon Marshall bringing all the takes. Uh, international game this weekend. Very quickly, I think Brady's turning it around. Do you? And I will never forget your international. You, are, you love an international game. You and Fitzy taking down yeah. the Dolphins. You're 128 yards. I will never forget that. Oh, look at that. This is the first game. It was the first play of the game, Kay. <laughs> I went to coach, and I promise you, I went to Fitz. I went to uh, uh, Chan Gailey. I went to Todd Bowles. I said, the first play of the game, I want to go ball. And they listened to me. And that's what happened, right? How fun that's was that happened. internationally? 
it was good. It was fun. I mean, the crowd was awesome. Um, I didn't expect that they were into it. You know, it, there was some times where they didn't know when to cheer, when to yeah. be quiet, but uh, it was electric from start to finish. Who wins, Seahawks or Buccaneers? My head says uh, uh, Seahawks, but my gut says Bucks because of what you said about Tom Brady. So I'm gonna go with the Bucks. I think, they're, I think they're turning it around. I know, good. but I like the Gino, the Gino, I, the whole Gino uh, Carroll thing. I'm too, super into. So uh, okay, we love you, Brandon. You took uh, again half of our show, which we love. <laughs> Next time we're just gonna not plan anything for the whole hour. You are amazing. Have a good weekend. All right. Love you guys. Keeping it real, as always. Thanks for my New York mm -hmm. Times shout out. We'll be back. Uh, the only quarterback, I think, in the National Football League we did not get to with Brandon Marshall is Matthew Stafford. Rough go this season. Is there something in the numbers that shows he could turn it around? We're drinking beers and getting PFF'd up next. Tom Brady, the GOAT. How do you say GOAT in German? I don't know, but here he is. Mr. Tom Brady on the turnaround for the Bucks. Of course, what happened yesterday, they could lose to the Seahawks and still be in the lead of that division. And that's where we are, and that is just his luck. It's Friday. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Not before we get a little pff up. Joining me now, he's back. We've missed you, PFF NFL podcast uh, host, the lead NFL analyst, Sam Munson. How are you? I'm good. Don't be blind, though. You don't. You haven't missed me. You've missed the opportunity to drink. That's, I did. That's we what we're talking about. I thought we were drinking the same thing. That would be on that day. We'll have to take shots. Uh, what do you got? I have. It's German. We, we've got to, you know, respect the international of game. Course. So Vorsteiner. Vorsteiner, German Pilsner. Okay. I mean, I, I, I thought you were in Ireland this whole time. So there's that. So a lot of European connections. I'm drinking. What is this? A Hofbrau? 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 Bra. Bra? Like bra? Like what's that? Bra? Sure. All right, bro. Okay. Well, this is delicious. So, cheers to you. Oh, I've got a nice. What is this called? A stein? A stein? I don't there know. There you go. Mm. I had too much wine last night. This is not going down as easy. Can I get a cold beer? Is that too much? This is a lukewarm. <laughs> That's how they serve in Germany. A lukewarm beer. That is how they said that's how they serve it in London, at least. All right, my friend. It has been a while. We've got the PFF Power Hour here. So Seahawks, Bucks, that's why we're drinking the German beer. Uh, let's go through some numbers that make NFL fans say, wait, what? what, what the first number is one. I'm going to say okay. that is the number of um, car leases I will ever do. Because I did one, and I hate it. I've scratched up my rims. I think I'm already in the hole from leasing this car, so I will <laughs> never do it again. What do you got? Never leased a car, but I've always bought or rented. But number one is not just the ranking that Tyreek Hill has in targets, yards, catches. It's also the ranking of his PFF Whoa. grade overall and against man coverage or zone coverage. So right now, Tyreek Hill is just always open. There is no solution to covering Tyreek Hill. So a team like Cleveland this week has its work cut out for them to figure out how on earth they're going to try and slow him down. We have an extra game. He's a, you know, uh, and we're heading into week 10. He already has over 1,100 yards receiving. And to put that into perspective, and this yards, he, no one else has even cracked 900. No one yeah. else. So he is, you know, people are making the MVP case for him, of course. All right, next, the number zero. Uh, no, zero is the number of men I will date that are cyclists on roads in LA. I will say that. If you are, if you are the, if you are Brad Pitt and you tell, and you are one of those guys who like want to ride their bike on the middle of San Vicente, I will say no and never date you. So zero of those guys <laughs> don't even come calling. What is it? I'm not touching that one. Look, I'm a cyclist. Everybody loves cyclists. That's fine. Go on a trail. A Knock yourself out. <laughs> stop, stop like with your death wishes on major roadways. Zero is the number of sacks given up by left tackle for the Minnesota Vikings, Christian Darius. Whoa. That's, he, he gave up five last season in a similar number of sacks because he didn't play until midway through the year. His improvement this year has been absolutely incredible. His PFF grade has jumped around 20 grading points. He's now one of the best left tackles in the NFL, going up against a very stiff test this week. Uh, okay, I love this, and I hope I'm not wrong, but I feel like doing this, and he's about to play Von Miller, is just some sort, sort of setting up some sort of yeah. PFF slash broadcaster jinx here. Am I wrong? It's, yeah, it's certainly risky. <laughs> Iki Aquanu was, was on a great run, and then he goes and plays Thursday night and gets penalized every three seconds, so it's always a risk. <laughs> and the number 20. Uh, 20 is the, I'm going to guess the number of tweets when I refresh my Twitter feed from Bears fans still hating me for no reason. What do you got? <laughs> Could be the number of times that verified or non-verified has been Ugh. turned on or off since we started oh, now this. I'm going to uh, start really drinking. Segment. 
20 is the longest catch given up by Patrick Sertan II this season. His longest of his career is only 30-something yards. He is one of the best corners in the league already. So smooth, so in control, just never out of phase and never in trouble during the route. Going up against Tennessee this week, hopefully they'll have Ryan Tannehill back and actually have some kind of threat. I love that 20. The Broncos have the NFL's number one ranked pass D this year and the number two total defense overall. All right, last one. The number is 6.7. And I'm sorry, to I'm like crying from chugging this beer. Go, just talk. <laughs> 6.7 is Matthew Stafford's average depth of target this season, which isn't just two yards or something lower than it was last year. It's the lowest of his entire career as the Rams desperately try and craft any kind of offense that functions behind the offensive line they have right now, which is ranked 32nd in the NFL in PFS line rankings, 32nd in pass blocking efficiency, dead wow. last in total pressures given up. It is a train wreck of an offensive line. And they're just trying to get the ball out of Stafford's hands as quickly as possible because anything else is is a nightmare. It's, it is a nightmare. I mean, the offense ranks 31st in the NFL this season. The defending Super Bowl champion, Sean McVay, at the helm. I imagine Andrew Whitworth is all but signing up to come back and try to fix things over there. Um, Sam Munson, we have a tweet, I believe. Let me just say, 6.7 was 6.7 is the rating of this warm beer that I'm drinking. Uh, Steven says, goat in German is... Siga. No, Siga. Siga. What do you mean? Pronounced Wait, so Christian C Siga was actually, his name was Christian Goat? That's That feels like something that could have been uh, uh, used more during his, his soccer playing career. Is it Ziga? I don't know what you're saying. Sam, I don't know what, literally <laughs> don't know what you're saying. But we love having you on the show. We appreciate it. You can catch all of Sam's work over at PFF.com and the new PFF app. We appreciate you. And uh, how do you say cheers? And I don't know. What does Heidi Klum say at the end of Project for One Away? What does she say? Happy Bye, Sam. We'll talk to you later. No, right? Yeah. No one knows what I'm saying? Yeah. Sam's so cool. All right. I'm drunk. Oh, ours, last week. Most of them, right? We did pretty well in our K-Makers. I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Why? Who gives me beer on this show? It's you guys are all so stupid. Okay, if you need someone to find the end zone in week 10, I'm not kidding, I'm pretty good at this. The parlay is trash, but this is great. I got you covered. Here's what I got for this week. Uh, hey, Chicago fans, take this. I'm going to tell them about your team. And I'm going to call it week because I'm from Chicago. You can't do anything about it. David Montgomery is my guy. He's averaged um, just under a touchdown per game in his career against the Lions. Now, I know that, you know, Aaron Jones couldn't get a touchdown against the Lions. That's neither here nor there. We will give it to uh, David Montgomery. I'm a big fan of his, so let's see if that can happen. How about Saquon Barkley? The Texans are on the docket. They have given up the most touchdowns to running backs this season. So Saquon has got fresh legs coming off a bye week. I think it makes sense for him to get into the end zone. And last but not least, Christian McCaffrey. It, I mean, come on. It was touchdown pollution for McCaffrey last time we saw him on the field and he's facing the Chargers defense and I know I said earlier this week nobody's talking about the Chargers but nobody's also talking about their defense that gets lit up and they've allowed the second most touchdowns to running backs this year so my pow 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 K-makers David Montgomery Saquon Barkley Christian McCaffrey Lil Mac from Punch Out not what did I call him Lil something I don't know what's going on. Richard's telling me that we're going to pull up a tweet. Great. The fact that people are tweeting my show is making me so happy today. Mike D says, oh, gosh, please stop saying, oh, why are we putting this up here? Richard, why, why are you giving a platform to the hatred of this fan base? Do I want to fix this? This is where I'm at. Do I want to fix it or do I want to double down and just be an enemy of the fan base? That's where I'm. I don't know. We didn't get to ask Brandon Marshall about it, but I think Brandon's on my side. But I also like that Chicago is so passionate and angry right now because they deserve to be. I don't know what to do with that fan base. We're gonna re I mean, I mean, I saw somehow my <laughs> somehow this helmet creeped back into the, the equation here. And I think it's just to antagonize and irritate Chicago fans that were I think it all comes down to the fact that I removed for I mean, for this helmet. But Bengals fans sent me this, A. Also, like Chicago, you come up with something that cool, then indifferent, and like, 
Maybe we'll get you back up here. That's how I feel. We, 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 the Bears fans. All right, we'll talk about Lamar Jackson after this. Uh, he's on a bye week, but I will tell you a sleeper quarterback. I mean, if you've been riding Lamar Jackson in those fantasy points, you need some help. We, 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 we got you covered. Let me see the mic, man. What's going on? Should be some big ass smiles, fellas. It doesn't matter how we get it done. You talk about hitting some hard times. You guys just keep coming back, man. Everything we wanted to accomplish this offseason, we doing. Look at how you do it. We out. Oh! Matthew Judon in that highlight reel. I mean, is he the defensive player of the year? He might be. How about you up? These are some guys you need to pick up and put in your daily lineup, some sleepers. Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, he's not been the greatest fantasy option in the past, but I think it's changing this year. He's been a top 10 quarterback in three of his last four games. And guess who's practicing? Guess who's due back? Debo! I expect a huge day against the Chargers defense. All right, Jeff Wilson. Wilson has 12 touches for 72 yards and a touchdown in his Dolphins debut last week. And uh, he's familiar with McDaniel's system. Um, and you know, played for him with the Niners. There's like synergy there. I like it. I think he has another big day against the Browns defense that's ha uh, been the third most generous to the running back spot. How about Josh Palmer? He's been Herbert's only healthy option. Woof. They did have 10 for 105 on 12 targets last week. I think he's featured heavily again this week against said Niners. A little stack action going on there um, between Jimmy Garoppolo and Josh Palmer. How about George Pickens? The Chase Claypool trade should only create a bigger target share, I think, for Pickens up against a banged up Saint secondary. Exciting young player to watch. And let's go back. Let's do it. We, 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 you and I, the Bears fans. Get Cole Komet here. He broke out with a really nice two touchdown performance last week. I think he keeps it rolling against the Lions defense. That's been the top five most generous to the tight end spot. So, of course, we include a Chicago Bear. We love this. Brian, are you dying? What's going on? Brian's coughing up a lung over here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Jimmy Garoppolo, Jeff Wilson, Josh Palmer, George Pickens, and Cole Komet are here. Let's bring in... Uh, Matt Hamilton for a little take that. What does that mean? Are we hot taking going towards a week 10? Oh, why not? We have some final thoughts. Hamilton is here. Hamilton, the winner of a very important football game. At Austin Luzzi set a record yesterday. He did. Uh, my quarterback at New Rochelle High School where I coach, he broke the school yeah, record for passing yards in a single season. Woo! Corey Dawson broke the record for receiving yards in a single Listen, season, over 1,000. If, so. if I could pick up that Dawson and get him in my fantasy lineups, I would. What a stud he is. So congratulations to New Rochelle. Now, uh, let's do this. Um, we're going to do some takes here. I don't know if uh, it was sitting down and talking to Levante David that did it, or maybe it was seeing Tom Brady dropping uh, that F-bomb at the podium. I, I am getting fired up about the Bucks. If you're watching the show all week, you kind of see that happening. Uh, and I do believe that we will see them have their most complete performance of this season internationally. Zige, was that wrong, Zige? Uh, Ziga, uh, the goat in Munich, and I do think that the uh, unfortunately, and I'm always my heart's rooting for the Seahawks. My mind is telling me though that the Bucks pull out a win. What do you think, Cammy? I like it. I think uh, I think we're gonna see that that Rams comeback spark this Bucks team a little bit. We saw, you know, that press conference. As funny as it was with Brady, that was uh, it was a return to Brady kind of being himself. It seemed like it was an exhale moment for him. And I think uh, I think we're going to see them gain some momentum from here. I don't know. And talking to Levante, they, they got to just stop. They got to stop that Kenneth Walker character. They got to stop yeah. Gino and all the menace. Can they do it? I think that they can in this game and the experience and the less travel hours, all of that. So, OK, there's also here's a take that. What should be like my thing for that? I don't know. OK, uh, I believe that there we talked about this with Brandon Marshall. There's a feeling. Uh, that as Case Keenum gets to start for the Bills on Sunday, that the wheels might start to fall off. Doesn't help that Rousseau and Poyer are ruled out, of course. And there's this, uh, this idea, I think, that this Bills team is in trouble and they can all fall apart. Not so fast. I think what Buffalo has built defensively and the way this Ken Dorsey offense is looking uh, up against a 27th ranked Vikings pass defense. I mean, this guy is more than capable of keeping the wagons on okay. track. That's what I think. Or at least keeping them circles or on the Oregon Trail, dividing, uh, you know, avoiding typhoid and snake bites and all of that. My point is be very care careful at ha handing the Vikings the win. 
uh, because number eight was announced as the starter. So as great as Allen has been in his shoes, of course, you cannot fill. Do you agree, Hammer, this team is more than just about him? I do. And I mean, uh, if we look at the practice video from Keenum yesterday, I mean, he's he's getting ready to do his uh, his best Josh Allen impersonation. Um, but yeah, I agree with you with the way that this defense is built and the offensive system, the way that they give you all these different looks, the way they use motion, the way they give you all these different personnel groupings, formations, keep a defense off balance uh, and all the weapons that they have. I think they can keep the, the ship afloat until Josh Allen gets back. If he does have to miss some time, I don't think um, you just start chalking up wins for the opponents if if Case Keenum's out there. But the We've Vikings seen him win are, a lot of games in this league. The Vikings are formidable, and the Bills are down two really important defensive pieces. Like, this could go either way, right? Oh, for sure. And and you can't take the Vikings lightly by any stretch. They're 7-1. and They played really well this year. Um you know, but we've also, as you talked about the other day, we've seen some issues with them where they haven't really put together the most complete start to finish performances. So, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a, t a hard fought not, battle either way. I'm not a German beer girl. I just take that. <laughs> take that German beer. I'm just not. I'm just not. Maybe it needs to be colder. I don't know. OK. Uh, hey, <laughs> Hamilton, tell me this and we can do this on a split screen. Uh, yes. uh, thank you, Sarushi. Sarushi who's going to Qatar. And leaving us, can we hear it for Sarushi's last show for a month? We're going to miss you. Our brilliant director who does so much with so little. Thank you so much, Sarushi, and, and, and for hitting splits like that. Uh, tell me this, is Debo playing this week? It looks like it. He's been practicing in full, so um, it, okay. it looks like he's going to be out there. Here's my last take that. I don't know that I've been as excited to see anything on a football field uh, as I am for this unveiling in the Niners offense. Christian McCaffrey, touchdown Palooza, as I said, and Debo Samuel coming off a bye, fresh legs off injury. Like, I, if you like football, what more could you ask for? Uh, and I think we're about to witness something truly special, honestly. And imagine the sort of plays that the flat-brimmed hat one will call up for this team. And it's the Chargers. The Chargers defense, which isn't doing super well. Are my eyes like glazed? Like, is this what's happening? Do you see what I look like, Hamilton? Love ya. There's a glow. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I, I hope I can get to the point one day where I get drunk off two sips of beer on national television. It'll be great. Sarushi, we'll miss you. <laughs>